A replacement for Ian Pinard confirmed. NYC president discredits talk that his executive is politically biased as a new team for the NYC is inaugurated. And Bath Estate man pleads guilty to brother-in-law's death. I am Idona Jean Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. You're watching Channel 5 News. First up, an accountant who is considered a confidant of Ian Pinard will replace him as the Labour Party candidate for the June 7 by-election. Denise Charles told Channel 5 News on Tuesday that she is the DLP's choice for the Point Michel, Soufrie, Scotshead and Gallio seat. When we contacted Charles to ask her for confirmation, she said, yes, I can confirm. I am the candidate. Charles was at the time busy with meetings in her constituency. Charles is employed as the human resource manager of PDV Caribe Dominica Limited, a former employer of Ian Pinard, before he recontested the 2014 general elections. Charles has a Bachelor's of Science in Accounting and a Master's degree in Business Administration. She currently serves in several positions, including a director of the Aid Bank's board and the Public Works Corporation. She is president of the Point Michel Development Committee and a member of the Point Michel Village Council. Charles, who's from Point Michel, has been at Pinard's side in the political sphere, something that was evident when he announced his resignation at a special meeting of the DLP Soufrie Constituency Association on April 26. Senator Jaisaya Benoit is making it clear that the National Youth Council, under his leadership, has not been politically biased in its decisions. A 14-member executive for the NYC was inaugurated on Monday evening at the Fort Young Hotel, eight of whom were elected at the NYC's election in August 2015. President Jaisaya Benoit says they are preparing to increase their outreach to community youth groups now that the state of affairs have improved since Tropical Storm Erica. So we have revamped our inventory of youth groups. That is to say, we have consciously over the past two months been on a regular basis finding out what's going on with the different youth groups, what is the change in terms of their leadership, so that we know there is a pulse in the council. And when we say we speak on behalf of 70 groups, we know who they are, we know where they stand. Would you say that you, you are successfully or effectively reaching youth, or the youth that are to be reached, the youth on the roadside, the youth on the block? I will say that we have raised the appeal of the National Youth Council in being the go-to organization to assist youth that are at risk. That is to say, this executive has been successful in increasing the visibility of the council and working more closely with the youth development division so that we can have that relationship to work in the communities. When we say it's not a jeans and t-shirt council, it means that we approach the work of the National Youth Council from a professional mindset. Benoit had come under criticism after being appointed a government senator in December 2014 and thereafter recontesting the presidency of the NYC. Those challenging the move thought he should have resigned from the position since the NYC is a non-governmental organization. But Benoit says he will always be a champion for the country's youth. It will also dispel the myth that one is politically biased just by virtue of which party you support. That is, is, is based upon your decision on a day-to-day -day basis. On a day-to-day -day basis, there is no politics being discussed in National Youth Council. On a day-to-day -day basis, political climate doesn't influence what takes place at executive meetings. And the executive members can attest to that as well. So it's, uh, I think it's serving a very strong purpose in demonstrating that the council is a training ground for leadership at the highest level and that we within the council have the, the maturity of thought not to allow politics to influence any organ of the National Youth Council, not the youth groups or the executive. In other top stories, a Bath Estate man pleaded guilty to the murder of his brother-in-law when he appeared before a high court judge on Tuesday. 
Reginald Mann has been on remand at the Stock Farm State Prison for the past three years, ever since he was charged for the December 26, 2013 murder of Glenroy Lockhart, who was at the time 33 years old. Lockhart was stabbed multiple times outside of his Bath Estate home. People describe it as a vicious attack. Family told Channel 5 News then that Lockhart and his sister were in their front yard when he got into a clash with man. Lockhart collapsed in front of his house after walking 10 feet from the crime scene with stab wounds. Reginald Mann's sentencing date is on May 27. In more news, a challenge to the prosecution and defense attorneys to put their acts in order as government makes a $300,000 annual investment in the court system. Government is making provisions for evening court sessions at magistrates' courts in Roseau to deal with litter, rent and liquor licenses, traffic and juvenile matters. This as three new magistrates, a court administrator and clerical staff will be appointed soon. Prime Minister Skerritt said that alone will not solve the backlog of cases if officers of the court are not as diligent as they ought to be. The Ministry of Legal Affairs, Ministry of Justice, is looking at arrangements to cause the courts to meet and to sit um, late afternoon, early evening, um, so that you don't have to disrupt somebody's workday um, to come to, to the courts to have those matters being heard during the late afternoon, early evening, to facilitate um, people who are seeking justice. Because sometimes the reasons why matters are delayed is simply because either the prosecution is not ready or the lawyers representing the clients are not ready. Um, and these things have to be set aside and adjourned and adjourned. So we have to ensure that, that the, the Bar Association you know, ensures that its, its, its membership um, avail themselves and prepare themselves properly for matters which they have um, in representing the clients. And that the prosecution, in most cases, who bring the matter before the courts so that they can be heard in a timely fashion. Skerritt says contrary to what people say, government ministers do not try to influence the judiciary. I do not engage magistrates, neither does the Attorney General or the Minister or anybody in the executive engage magistrates. We do not engage the Director of Public Prosecution on any matter before, uh, before her. Neither do we engage the judges. Our, our only engagement to these officers of the court is in respect to the conditions of work. A qualified counsellor is supporting the need for a financial aid arrangement by the state for children in some cases while their fathers are serving a prison sentence. Executive Director of Lifeline Ministries, Tina Alexander, is recommending that be done. She was commenting on a recent court ruling in which a man found guilty of indecent assault on a minor received a suspended sentence since the High Court judge considered a prison sentence would disadvantage his dependents because that would be one less income in their household. Alexander believes while she understands the judge's decision, this is sending a wrong message. If it had been judged in a family court six years ago, it would have been a custodial sentence. So we just need to focus on what we really need to change. We need to change the system. We need a family court so that children go to court once and finish with it, that they can be seen on a, on a camera and not have to face a perpetrator. I don't think it's correct to say because somebody's a breadwinner, they should not be held responsible for their crimes. Most of the drug dealers in the prison are breadwinners. We're going to let them go home too? Alexander is advocating for a proper public assistance system to address this situation. And I don't think that the fact that the family have few resources is a good reason not to send somebody to prison. Um, we don't have a proper social security, public assistance type system here. And so many, many families are struggling financially. And that doesn't mean that they can commit crimes and get away with it. That's, this is a, a warped logic. When the breadwinner goes to prison, the wife claims benefits. Um, because the 
country, the society, has a commitment to make sure that people have a basic amount to live on. That's what public assistance is meant to be about. Meantime, child rights advocate Delia Coffey Wicks is of the firm conviction that offenders must be held in greater accountability for the trauma they inflict upon children. And even when people are convicted, yes, they get the punishment of going to jail, but what is their responsibility to fixing that child that they have damaged? Why don't we hold them responsible for the counseling that that person requires? Because one of the things we'll say, the state cannot provide, but the person who has done the deed has to take certain responsibilities. Wicks believes more counselors should be available to assist those suffering from this ordeal. And make sure that we have the trained professionals to provide the counseling in a, a, an environment that has no stigma attached to it. But let us have counselors outside of the school system outside of the hospital system that are available. You have the NGOs and the other government agencies that deal with people. Equip those agencies with more officers who can give support. Some of the NEP money should maybe go towards training people to act as supporters. Where are the shelters for the women, the children, the men? who need a home away from home. You're watching Channel 5 News. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Dominican consumers who wish to purchase solely organic produce are cautioned that identifying organic crops is not as easy as they think. Andrea Louis has more. With so much emphasis being placed on eating healthy and organic foods, Channel 5 News sought to inform consumers on what to look for when it comes to organic crops. A popular belief is that organic produce is less visually appealing than non-organic produce. However, an officer with the Division of Agriculture has dispelled that myth. Most persons say, well, they look for the, the, the ugly cabbage or the cabbage with the most worms on it and so to know that it's organic. That is untrue right because i can challenge anyone and i can bring some fresh organic produce that will look more aesthetically pleasing in comparison to a product that may be laced with chemicals organic is really growing a sustainable crop and keeping it as close as possible to the natural ecosystem the natural practices of nature Organic farming, simply put, is the non-use of synthetic fertilizer, pesticides and other artificial substances in one's crop or livestock production practices. Stevenson says the Division of Agriculture has been working steadily over the years to sensitize farmers on organic agricultural practices. Through the Division of Agriculture and other NGOs such like Dominica Organic Agricultural Movement, we have worked collaboratively to um, build capacity amongst farmers we have developed um, private standards through DOME, Dominica Organic Agricultural Movement, organic standards, and we have trained over 60 organic farmers in the past through those DOME standards with the hope that they will follow those organic standards and have a membership with DOME. They will have a local logo and um, can be recognized by the local consumers as organic growers. On the question of labeling produce as organic, Stevenson says there needs to be regulation in place for this to happen. Presently, there is no regulation or in place to enforce those things. So it is all voluntary. So that's why we were hoping like a NGO such as DOME could use this and their members through them could, could use this logo, knowing that there were members of DOME certifying the procedures or in collaboration with the Division of Agriculture, the extension officers using the DOME guidelines as um, certification and whatnot could go to those organic farmers and ensure that they're following those guidelines so that voluntarily they could use a DOME logo or an organic logo stating that they are organic. 
The agriculture officer noted that a sure way of identifying organic produce is if consumers have a close relationship with their supplier. Really and truly, the only way we can differentiate an organic product in the market is through knowing the practices and the processes that the farmer went through in growing that product. Still in agriculture, a local soil scientist is recommending a greater push towards organic agricultural practices to help the country with its climate resilient efforts. Dr. Almario Kazimi, a technical officer within the Division of Agriculture, believes now more than ever adopting organic agriculture practices is necessary. From since 2002, there were some significant initiatives attempted locally. So we had, for example, the organic barn movement and the organic barn experimental plot at Bellevue Chope on the farm of Mr. Royamon with financial assistance from the government of Dominica and the Organization of American States OS. And we actually saw the production of at least three acres of certified organic fruit, which was earmarked and shipped to the UK under the Whip Deco label at the time. Well, obviously there were institutional challenges. We did not see the fruition of the initiative. Institutional challenges that we still have not gotten around to. Kazimi's comments are on the heels of next week's country conference hosted by the UWE Open Campus. The event will focus on ensuring Dominica's sustainability through food and nutrition security. Kazimi says there is potential for Dominica should the country embrace the organic island concept. The organic system is a really and truly a closed system of production where it is a certifiable system meaning that all of the actors from the value-added chain have to be certified. We had a producer with a valid certificate issued by the Soil Association of the United Kingdom authorizing him to actually undertake organic certification and organic production of bananas. But nonetheless, the system in itself, fragmented as it was at the time, could not actually respond in terms of the market demand. And thus, these are some of the institutional challenges that we have to overcome as we move along with this organic island concept. The Country Conference on Food and Nutrition Security and Resilience in the Nature Isle is scheduled for May 19 and 20. Police anti-drug operations continue to yield success as they tackle the illegal drug situation in the country. This as one adult male from Pitit Savannah has been slapped with drug and ammunition charges. The 23-year-old was charged over the weekend with possession of cannabis, possession with intent to supply, and possession of a firearm and ammunition. On Friday, the 6th of May 2016, at Layou, Darren Kelon Hille, 23 years old, was found in possession of 1.22 caliber pistol, one round of 0.22 caliber ammunition, and 186 pounds of cannabis weed with an approximate street value of 186,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars. The arrest was the result of an anti-drug operation led by the Drug Squad Unit of the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force. And reigning Calypso monarch Denison Dice Joseph has been discharged from the Princess Margaret Hospital after an accident where he lost control of his bike. The eight-time Calypso King was involved in a motor vehicle mishap on Saturday, 7th May. The accident took place on Goodwill Road, where Joseph, riding scooter registration number PS362, lost control and went off the road. Joseph sustained injuries to his head and other body parts and was admitted to the PMH Saturday evening and discharged on Tuesday. That's news. Kenny Williams is next with your sports highlights. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us in cricket. Dominica Grammar School beat St. Mary's Academy on first innings decision in the 2016 first domestic insurance under-15 cricket championship. They batted first and scored 63 all-out. 
Yannick Josiah, 16, and Niall Benjamin, 13. Ethan Doctro and Cody Peltier took three each for Dominica Grammar School. DGS in reply scored 110 all out. Cody Peltier scored 56. Majid Peltier took three for 20. Darren Edwards, two for 17. And Ajani Peltier, two for 10. SMA in the second inning scored 105 for 7. Majid Peltier posted 45. And Ethan Nicholas, 19. Ethan Doctro took five for 28. We move now to football where games in the National Leagues of the Dominica Football Association continue this week with seven games on the cards. In the All-Island League on Friday, Mahosoka Strikers will do battle with Maxroy Classics Focoli at 5 p.m. At 7, ACS Tarish United will come up against Times Ballers Middleham United. Both games are scheduled for Newtown Playing Field. Meantime in action from the Dominic Women's League. Defending champions New India Goodwill Runners will be hoping to edge a step closer to defending their title when they come up against Mao Soka Strikers at Newtown Playing Field at 3 p.m. Next on the field will be Dive Dominica Harlem United versus Wood City Strikers at 5 p.m. And in the DFA Sports Division Secondary Schools Girls League, Wesley High School and Pierre Charles Secondary will face off at 2 p.m. in the first match of a doubleheader to be followed by Dominica Grammar School versus Portsmouth Secondary at 3 p.m. Then on Friday, it will be a showdown between Isaiah Thomas and Goodwill Secondary Schools at 2 p.m. All matches are carded for Lillo Park. Meantime, St. Martin Secondary defeated Convent High School three goals to one, and Dominica State College defeated ITSS three goals to one. In court sports, Fashion Line Falcons will be looking to add another win to their tally when they come up against Digital Cloud in the Division I match of the 2016 Flow DABA League on Wednesday. Following them will be a face-off between the Premier Division's Fashion Line Falcons and Signman X-Men. The games begin at 7 and 8 respectively at Lindo Park. Still in sports, action continues in the 2016 Flow National Volleyball League when DB's Young Vets and Seinman Celtics convene at the Flow Court in Canefield for some ball spiking action. And on to the north, where the Breakers and Kalinago teams will be handling business on the court in Portsmouth to determine who is superior. All games begin at 6.30 p.m. And on the international cricket scene, Sunrisers Heidi Rabad defeated Rising Pune Supergiants by four runs in the 40th match of the 2016 Indian Premier League on Tuesday. Sunrisers had first knock and scored 137 for eight, with no batsman topping Chikar Darwan's 33. Kane Williamson added 32. Adam Zampa wreaked havoc in the Sunrisers batting lineup, taking an impressive 6 for 19. Supergiants in reply fell short of their target and were reduced to 133 for 8. George Bailey scored the most runs for Supergiants with 34. Ashish Nira picked up 3 for 29 for Hyderabad. That's all the time for sports. I am Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. The weather report is next. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Courier to Joseph. We start off this evening by taking a look at some earlier satellite imagery and what it showed is this area of convection associated with the trough system currently affecting the region. Visible satellite imagery showed this band of multi layered clouds across Dominica. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers across the islands. Conditions for tonight, partly cloudy with some scattered showers. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers and the possibility of some isolated thunderstorms. Sea conditions, moderate in open water with waves up to 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise some caution. Taking a look at our extended forecast, Mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers expected on Wednesday and Thursday with the possibility of some thunderstorm by Wednesday afternoon into Thursday. On Friday, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides and fallen rocks are advised to exercise some caution. Across the region tomorrow, the trough system will maintain mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers and possible thunderstorm activity across the central portion of the island chain. Meanwhile, partly cloudy conditions 
with scattered showers can be expected across the northern and extreme southern portion. On the international scene, partly cloudy conditions in New York, cloudy skies in Miami, some rain in London and Beijing, and thunderstorm in Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.37 a.m. and set at 6.26 p.m. For updated information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. A replacement for Ian Pinard confirmed. NYC president discredits talk that his executive is politically biased as a new team for the NYC is inaugurated and Bath Estate man pleads guilty to brother-in-law's death. Remember, you can contact us at news at mapping2k4.com and you can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona John Baptist. Thanks for watching. Join us again tomorrow.